we're taking them through uh, sp specific neck exercises to muscle failure. Uh, each one's working different muscles. So I'm looking to make sure that he's moving his head in full range of motion so that he's touching his ear to this shoulder and then also over here. It's a really great way for kids to experience evidence-based strength training. Uh, this is a, um, a study that was done in conjunction with Dr. Ralph Cornwell's original research entitled Project Neck One. So what this study did was add to the body of literature that's now showing that strengthening the neck helps to mitigate concussions and cervical spine injury. Can concussions be mitigated? Absolutely. Are there a lot of studies going on about that? I would say, with the exception of one in Australia, we're the only one. Vantage students were responsible for all aspects of the research. They drew up informed consent forms, they recruited subjects, and they actually conducted research. Of course, they're all NIH certified, which means they're certified to work with human subjects, which I would say they're probably the only high school group in the country that is, has that certification. I think it's interesting because each one of these machines specifies and it's specific and it targets muscles that really, and it strengthens them. It trains the neck in all four directions. But, but the neck, okay? But also, it trains the muscles of the head. And what's so important about that is those muscles actually hold your head onto the spine. So if you don't want the head to move, you have to strengthen the muscles that hold the head still. Some people, they, they rely on the helmet, especially in football. And really the helmet is designed to keep you from cracking your skull. And it does a very good job at that but it doesn't dissipate an enormous amount of energy. The brain is still moving inside the helmet. It's like an egg. You know, the yolk is still moving. Because the bigger circumference you have, like the less dissipation there will be. These kids are working out with the scientifically correct movements and exercises, which are gonna be the most physiologically beneficial for them. Sometimes when you fall skiing, if like before, I think last year, it was a lot harder to keep my neck from kind of going all over and this year it was a lot easier to keep it straight from rolling around and bending when you hit the ground. I can notice it in my uh, shoulders, my lats too. I can feel size dif differences, strength differences, especially just when I'm doing the exercise I feel stronger. I'm in rugby and a lot, we do a lot of like tackling and stuff and so now like since I like strengthen my neck my like head is kind of just like staying there, it's just planted in its spot. We elicited uh, results in necks that were actually trained over several years and got really great results. I mean, l landmark results. When, when we publish this, you know, we'll, we'll be setting a new bar. Hopefully, through this, other high schools start saying, you know, we need to do this. And then, uh, instead of it trickling down from the NFL, really it's gonna trickle, it's a trickle up effect. We're already making plans for Project Neck 3 and we'll be taking a look at, there's 11 exercises in the protocol right now. Can we get the same results if we split the protocol up and do it on separate days? So, and can we get the same results if we scale back the 11 exercises to say seven? To work with real people, which especially in high school is something, you know, a lot of people don't get an opportunity to do. Uh, helps that you're like, you know, you're working with people, so you have to have kind of like, you know, bedside manner, I guess. It's very different because we're actually doing hands-on experience and we're training people. And it's innovative, it's never been done before. Push. Nice. Please go one more. 